Praise the Lord. My daughter has already read the scripture, but I'm going to read it again for everyone. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Uh, I share that scripture today because I want to share with you all that I believe in the Bible. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. I believe in the Trinity. I believe in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and that I have that indwelling. I have seen miracles and I have done the research. I believe in God. But with all that being said, I've come to the conclusion that I do not trust God. And I know that's going to sound blasphemous for a preacher to say, but I've come to that conclusion that I don't trust him because I want to be honest with God and honest with you. That I just don't trust God. How can you believe in God and still not trust him, Tony? I hear you saying that. I hear you asking me those questions. But let me explain. There are three reasons why I don't trust God. I don't trust God, number one, because of the pain. See, my daughter trusts me that I love her, but if I'm driving her to the pediatrician to get a shot, she doesn't trust me. See, the longer you preach in this life, the more pain that you see. Tiny caskets make me distrust God. One of the things that shook me up the most in life is when I saw a tiny casket where a little baby was buried in. A friend of mine's daughter died at a very, very, very young age and no one could explain it. And to see that tiny casket, it made me distrust God. How can a loving God allow such pain? People in the hospital dying alone from the coronavirus. That makes me distrust God. This may seem silly, but even stories that I don't experience firsthand can shake my trust in God. The story of Charla Nash makes me distrust God. You don't know who Charla Nash is? Well, Charla Nash was an employee and a friend of a woman who kept a pet monkey named Travis. One day, Travis freaked out and mauled Charla. He took away her face, her eyesight, her hands. Just me imagining a life like that shakes up my trust in our loving father. The second reason why I don't trust God is that he is unpredictable. I am a writer and most writers have a formula. We have the intro, the rise, the climax, the fall, the resolution. But sometimes our God can go left when everyone else thinks he is going right. How many of you all saw the coronavirus coming? How many of you, while watching The Apprentice, thought one day that man is going to be president? How many of you imagined that America's dad, Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable, would go down in history as America's most prolific serial rapist? I don't like unpredictable friends. In fact, when you are too unpredictable, I slowly work you out of my circle. All of my good friends... Deacon Myers, David, John, Kim, they are all predictable. So sometimes I don't trust God because there's no telling what God is going to do next. And I'm not the only one either. The Pharisees thought they had him figured out. But then a peasant named Yeshua proved that they didn't. Many kings fell to Israel because they assumed that God was not with such a tiny nation. And Saul, who knew that that man would lead the church, the same man who persecuted it. How can you trust someone when you have no idea what they might do next? God, he is unpredictable. I don't trust God because we may not be on one accord. You see, I got dreams. I want to walk both of my daughters down the aisle. I want to have good relationships with their husbands while instilling a godly reverence in those men that I might be crazy. I want my wife to be holistically blessed because she has invested so much into me. 
I have been overweight for most of my life and I want to kill that Goliath before that Goliath kills me. This may sound petty, but I want my, my daughters to, to know their dad was special. And I want them to be proud of my memory. I want people who went to high school when I went to high school to dig out their yearbooks because they hear my name and they wonder, didn't I go to school with him? I want the Hill Ministry to be established where it goes on without Kim and I. And we come back and we're proud to visit. I have dreams, but the cold, brutal reality is this. None of those dreams may come true. God may have different plans. If you had a friend in the natural who their dreams meant that all of your dreams would die, would you trust that friend? See, I don't trust God because in his book, maybe he comes back next Sunday and all my plans get destroyed. See, those are the reasons why I don't trust God. I don't trust him because of the pain that I've seen in this world. I don't trust God because he's so unpredictable. I don't trust God because he might devastate my dreams. So you might be wondering, why is this fool preaching when he doesn't trust God? There are two scriptures that they explain my madness today. In Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, it says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. In Corinthians, it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and but then shall I know even as also I am now known and now Abide of faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. See, on the 6th of June in 1944, men stormed the beach at Normandy because they believed in America. They knew they were going to die, but they were fighting for something bigger than themselves. They fought for something that is still an ideal, and not yet 70 years later, it's still not a reality. Black men in the Civil War fought for a country that was not fair or just. They fought because they had hope that if they had provided the ultimate sacrifice, that their children's children would see this nation that would rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Those men died dreaming of the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners being able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Those men died because they hoped for a nation where their grandchildren would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And a hundred years later, their grandchildren are still shot dead in the streets. See, when you are a child, you trust in God. To end your pain. When you are a child, you want God to perform his miracles on your schedule. When you are a child, you obey God because you hope that your obedience will be repaid with your wildest dreams coming true. But when you put away childish things, though, you realize that God has put eternity in your heart for a reason. When you grow up, you realize that while the American dream is a beautiful ideal, that America in reality is not the answer. God has put something in us that you live long enough, you realize is bigger than our individual hopes and dreams. In our hearts lives something bigger than our individual pain. In our hearts lives something bigger than, than this relative thing called time. In our hearts, God put what Dr. King spoke about. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Despite any pain that I might experience, despite God's timing and mine not being in sync, and despite the fact that all my dreams may be deferred, I serve God because I believe in what John saw. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
then death shall be no more. Neither shall there be no more mourning, no crying, no pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. You see, it's common for young men with celebrity statuses to throw stones at the church and they say, all those simple preachers promising a heaven they haven't seen, promising rewards in heaven, give me my stuff now. And sadly, you hear many prosperity preachers preaching the same. But to them, I counter, please tell me that the bull crap of this world is not worth all that you are killing for because I'm telling you it ain't. Please tell me that life is more than just a big house. Please tell me that life is more than a luxury car. Please tell me that life is more than great sex. Please tell me that life is more than being famous. Maybe some old preachers preach on the by and by because we've lived long enough to realize that everything that glimmers ain't gold. Maybe some of us have realized that this world never seems to pay off. When you are a babe in Christ, you trust God to be your genie in a bottle. You rub him with your tithe and he will bless you with your dreams. To grow up in the Lord is to whisper in the deepest possible pain after your baby has died. Not my will, Lord, but thy will. To grow up in the Lord means that you don't just trust him with your house. You trust him with his kingdom. I don't trust him to give me a life without pain. I don't trust him to do things when I expect him to. I don't trust him to answer my every dream. But I do trust him for what the apostle Paul wrote. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For, the, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. At some point, we got to grow up. And we've got to trust God, not just for what he can give to us in the now. We've got to trust God for what he is establishing for all of us in the future. We've got to believe in something bigger than ourselves. It's not about just my dreams. It's not about my pain. And it's not about God doing things on my time. It's the bigger picture. It's his kingdom. It's his glory. It's his world. It's his universe that he is remaking every day. And we've got to trust God for that and not just what we can get out of it. God bless you. It's a short sermon today, but that's what the Lord put on my heart. God bless you all. I love you all. And y'all take care and have a great, have a great week. And remember to trust God for what really matters.